But I learned, I, I learned that such a small, in other words, the name is so obscure, I bet they don't have a book in French. Right. Right. Well, what's the ethnic and national derivation of Well, Lucha? my dad and his father came from the Ukraine. That's all I know. Uh, Unfortunately, I did a video portrait of my mother who lived to 98, and, uh, and she, was she had total memory. She was brought to this country in 1905. When she was born in 1895 and brought here at age five in 1900 and remembered uh, Woodrow Wilson, not Woodrow Wilson, who was the Teddy Roosevelt? Teddy Roosevelt? No, no, who was the guy, who, who was assassinated when Teddy became president? Garfield. Garfield. Yeah. Garfield. Gar I think so. Wait a no. There were McKinley and Garfield McKinley. were both assassinated. McKinley. Okay. She she remembered his funeral. She grew up in Latvia and she remembered the house they lived in. Uh, they had no refrigeration and no electricity. And she and she tells the story. I have part of her story in the book. And uh, I have a video portrait. When she was 93, I interviewed her. She had total recall, an amazing woman. What, did she grow up in Riga, or did she grow up in the countryside? No, she, she was five when she was brought here. Yeah, she was, but she, where, she, where, she, where was she born? I mean, In Riga. Latvia, in a small right. town. Ah, uh, okay, because Latvia has this big, it's part of the old Hanseatic League, and the Germans set up ports all over the Baltic which were essentially German cities. So Riga is a German city with a German culture and high cultural aspirations and all that kind of thing. And the countryside is Slavic. So it, I come from a family where half of my family, my mother's side, comes from Riga. And they were cursed with the fact that they had, or blessed with the fact that they had these high German expectations and wanted to advance in knowledge and advance in degrees and stuff like that. But my poor grandmother wasn't able to get a husband from the city. So she ended up with a husband from the outskirts of town. Well, those were Rus and Hicks, the Slavic people, as far as the people in Riga were concerned. And their mm. marriage <laughs> was a nightmare mm. as a consequence. Interesting, yeah. But look what um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've they regretted it ever since. But we do not realize today how poverty stricken. Like a friend of mine volunteered for the Peace Corps at the age of, nine, of 72. This is about the mid, mid 90s. She went over to Russia and she said she never realized how simple life could be. She lived in a, in a house that didn't have inside heat. And the people that lived there had been farmers, and the guy had six children, and so there were there was one big bowl for mush and eight spoons. That was all there was in the way of cutlery or food service, you know. And she said she suddenly realized how utterly simplistic, you know, life could be in the poverty-stricken rural areas of Russia. Well, this was only. 15 years? Another positive word for soap here. Um, <laughs> in the court... What, the, what is your brand? Just come on, uh, tell no, us. I, I, I whatever I can get in a pump. Um, but um, it, it, at the court of Louis XIV in Versailles, people were living the richest, most <laughs> luxurious life on the face of at least the western side of the world. They would have had greater luxury if they'd actually been in China However. or Japan. Yeah, but okay, one However. of the great... Yes? But... However. Yes, well, but the great beauty, the great beauty of the court, they all got together for dinner every night. And somebody was lucky enough to sit next to the great beauty of the court. And um, he commented on how dirty her feet were. Remember, people took baths once every six months. Mm -hmm. The idea of soap and water hadn't been invented yet. And she said, well, if you think that's bad, you should see the rest of me. So. <laughs> Well, I, I well, I'd like to. What was the first TV show that was hit the public airways in the United States? Well, what year was that, more or less? Well, I started. I started at NBC in January of 1949. Wow. We went on the air with Howdy Doody, uh -huh. uh, 5:30 to 6, as I recall, and we went off at 9:30. Our entire broadcast day was four hours, and when I left. Pat Weaver had come along and we were broadcasting 24 hours a day. So I don't know what. So 1949 or 1950 started uh, television in America, more or less? Uh, no, 1949, 50, 51, and 52. My, my dad was the uh, the first uh, lead actor in what he said, uh, I thought was the first TV series called uh, The Agony, uh, put on by CBS. 
What was it called? The, uh, he said, I think it was 49 or 50. So he also did Ford's movie. theater and, and stuff that was interesting, but an experimental television. He said that in those days, the show could only run like 15 minutes because the lights were so hot. And, and it was a live broadcast. Um, and it was called Yegan. It was like a country folk thing. And it was, but it was coming out of the there CBS was a studios. There was a movie called Yegan. I was part of Colbert and yeah, Murray. Murray. Murray, and they were city folk that went out to the country to become country folk. Right. They started. So it was NBC age. or CBS or was it ABC? What was the first? Uh... Well, there were three networks: NBC, ABC, CBS, and briefly there was a company called Dumont, yeah, okay. which made television sets called? as well as the Dumont. Dumont. And Dumont. this was there was no such thing as cable. Uh, many stations were independent, and. Uh, in those days, all production was in New York. Hollywood was yet to come. When I, I then went to Radio Free Europe, I left NBC six years later in 1954. When I came back in 1957, all production had moved to California. It was totally different, and uh, some production was in New York, but you know, like certain crime shows that needed big cities and so location stuff. So. But uh, there was a major transition in the period when I was gone. But it was, it was when I worked in it, it was amazing. We had the Perry Como show. That was a very good show. Over and a young show? Pardon? Uh, uh, I Love Lucy? Yeah. That was from California, yeah. But yeah, when I, I grew up, the kid, the programming seemed to be very morally, uh, you know, like uh, Father Knows Best, Leave It to Beaver, Dennis the Menace. Now the, the t television programming is sort of immoral. It's like dysfunctional families and the ones to marry millionaire. It's totally, you know, based on the lowest common denominator. And yeah, fighting right. and violence and murder proliferates. Whereas right. in the early days there was a lot of yeah. sense of morality and trying to bring up family values. It right? has deteriorated. I think our whole moral tone of our country. I think we hit our peak after World War II. When I got out of the army in 1946, mm. this country was absolutely extraordinary. Everybody in the world wanted to come here. Okay. I think morally the country was healthy. Politics was clean, or at least it appeared to be. And education was, was free. Oh, education no. was free. You went to California, all you had to do was feed your face and have a roof to sleep under. You could go to school and get a college education for nothing. Yeah, well, and University of Texas, it was fifty dollars a, a semester. Well, you got the Bill, you got uh, Fannie Mae and Bernie Mac, you got all sorts of benefits for the people <coughs> that came back and had fought the war. It was extraordinary. But today you end up graduating with a degree in art history and eighty thousand dollars in debt. And which Mitt means that you can't go bankrupt to even get rid of it. And you know what Mitt Romney says, don't take out student loans. If you need money, ask your parents. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's, that's his solution to the education and financial problems of this country. Yeah. Well, we, we need, do you think we need a big change somewhere? Or do you think the people who are talking Occupy people or whatever, people who are thinking systems, yeah. Do we need a big change that the technological liaison in this universe is signaling that the new change is in the air? And are you optimistic or pessimistic I don't for know. the human's prospect? Harold, I don't know. Yeah. I saw a, a friend of mine sent me a, 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 a link to a picture of the police beating people up in Zucchini Park. It's mm. a horror. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The police beating up kids with billy sticks. But, Harold, Harold, there's no, there's no doubt that we need a big change. We're destroying the planet with fossil fuels, uh, energy, when we have eco-friendly energy solutions. We're living constant denial of 9-11 truth. We have constant droning and bombing of Pakistan and Afghanistan. Obama's bombed six countries. We live with the Patriot Act, the National Defense the Authorization Act, which abrogates not only our Bill of Rights, but the Magna Carta, 800 years of justice. We live in a perpetual lie with total, out of control, murderers, sociopaths in the White House and in government that just cater to uh, uh, the sick society. You know that Obama put the head of Monsanto, Michael Taylor, 
as charge of Food and Drug Administration. <laughs> we have the wolves guarding the hen house. There's no morality and there's no consensus of what was really right. You know, every time you go to a, buy anything, you get a receipt. It ain't any ATM. It was very simple. Now, the most important uh, time, elections, every four years, we can't get a receipt out of our, our out of a paper trail out of our elections. Come on. The, the elections are rigged by computers. You can't trust a computer for Vox Populi uh, consensus of the vote. And, and, and it's totally rigged. Everything is like screwed up catering to corporate fascism. And let's just face it, we live in a very sick, dark time of total out of control greed. And, and whether you're Obama or Romney, these people are knuckleheads that cater to Coca-Cola instead of uh, clean water. Yeah, you, should learn, you should learn, Frank. You should learn, Frank, not to, to keep it all inside. You should, you, should, <laughs> you should say like it really is. Once in a while. Make it feel yeah, but, uh, it is yeah, but the sickness that you talk about being uh, in our society was in, in Occupy, too, because I was down there. I was down there with my film camera. And what went on in Zuccotti Park, uh, there was a the woman shelter, a woman got raped, so the women wanted a tent where they'd be safe. Of course, the men were the ones that finally decided they had to run the women's shelter tent. And then there was an area of the park where the drug dealers were. So all the ills of our society came in to occupy, just as they are out there in our society at large. So I don't know what the solution is, because I think what we're really dealing with here is the human character. That there is these, these dark spirits in flaws in human beings, and they manifest themselves in ways that you somehow you describe as being corporate greed. But corporate greed is not, it's not something that's separate from human beings. Greed is a human element that's just as just as just as relevant to the people that populate Occupy as those that populate Wall Street, in my opinion. But getting back to what Summer was saying about yeah, sure. television changing the world. And it's true, I think, if we had images, positive images up there, of a kind of world we wanted to see, we would see those changes happening, people emulating that. But what do you see on television? You see cutthroat competition, yeah. these ridiculous, uh, I don't even watch the reality shows, reality where the, shows. the whole point is to get the other person so that you're the one on top. I mean, it's just kind of mindless, uh, consumer, oriented, getting things, you know, bring yourself up. It's, it's so mindless. What well, James, James, James Joyce said, you know what I adore? If we could take, Listen, if I, we could take, if we could take over those television airways and, and wrest them from these corporate interests but and you know, actually put forth uh, what, what can be what real can, life. What can we do? You know what bothers me more than anything I can think of? Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court. <laughs> me too. I can't, I just cannot understand how that could be. <laughs> well, it, just, it, it is just beyond imagination. And that's the kind of corruption, stupidity, nastiness that you bring up. Wait. He, the, uh, Bush okay. had an illegitimate mandate in 2000. Gore won the popular vote, but the Supreme Court handed a coup d'etat to the Bush cr crime family. And since then, they've had this illegitimate mandate that just ruined our country. Traders really outsourced all our jobs abroad and shredded the Bill of Rights. And this terrorist attacked our country in 2001, and they won. They, they, we live in a state of constant terror. We were, in a, we're in a subject to constant surveillance and, and impossible paranoia by, by a paranoid uh, ruling class that, that believe in war. And, and in the old days, it was called graft and corruption. When Cheney could give a carte blanche, uh, you know, uh, no lid, no bid contracts to Halliburton that he was chairman of. And, and these people that have this in-house uh, war business agenda that is completely insane. How dare we drone Pakistan on a regular basis? What I like better. Frankly, what I really like better on television is the fact that you're watching a movie and it's a commercial break. And for the first 30 seconds, it's this big new hamburger you've got to eat. <laughs> and then they switch to your new diet program where you can lose <laughs> the weight. weight. You just got to eat in the and then they go to another piece of manipulative information. So if you want to talk Marshall McLuhan and the yes, good. is such and such. I used to, 
when I was working at radio, we would have flashes. 10 second spots, 15 second spots, 20 second spots. And it was like, <laughs> and you'd be filled with a staggering amount of information in a small little amount of time. And you didn't know what you were really listening to. It was like boom, 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 boom. It was like somebody hit you with a ping pong ball. And when you talk about television, I can sit there on the couch and flash through 1,000 channels of television and see nothing. It's a commercial, it's a dopey broad, it's a sex channel, it's a commercial. There's a BBC. Yeah. There's public access television. There's, oh, there's, there's an NHK. <laughs> and there's WLIW. Yeah. And there's a history channel. And I've had, I love the thing, oh, Mar they, Modern Marvels, 161. Yeah. There, there are educational channels, but they don't get many views. I'm just there are thinking, National Geographic. There are C-SPAN C -SPAN 1, C-SPAN 2, and C-SPAN. I'd to intervene. I think we're intruding upon the time of Sumner Grove Gritzner. I, I'm telling no. you that you've been so generous with your time, and I thank you enormously. I don't think I've got to go home. And I think so. I don't doubt it, sir. 88 and still <laughs> kicking. Think, You're still you. kicking. You are a super oh, man. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. I've been graced in my home by you, my son. Don't you? <laughs> thank you all. No, oh, thank you, listen, sir. Listen, if I don't, if I don't have your email, please give it to me so I can invite you to my screening. Yeah, he has oh, great. Yes. He's yes, involved. Please. Okay. Are you involved with the? Away. He's involved with the thing that creates the Emmys, aren't you? Or American Academy of Theater Arts and Science or something? Yeah, well, that's where you get screenings. Right. Hey, he's an amazing guy. He's he sure amazing. is. Boy, isn't he you great? Have, isn't he great? What I can't. I have Don't never. I've been here for many presentations, yeah. but <laughs> nothing has equaled this. <laughs> Absolutely, Harold. <laughs> you have knocked the ball out of the park with Not having this gentleman this time. Man, right. I mean, I mean, having this right. this man is a genius. Yeah, yeah. A proven genius. He ain't so bad. I mean, a bad. <laughs> no, he isn't bad either. Also, my name is Melinda. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Your email. Well, that was really. Three video cars yeah. and burned out two was batteries. I was totally out of batteries and video space. So, <laughs> how much yeah. time do you get on each car? I, I'm not sure. I know that I go through two batteries and I thought, you know, I came thinking I might get, you know, I shot some video over there. Right. You know, but, but to think, thank God, the one I didn't get was captured. So, you must have gotten. I got the most. You got about two hours or two and a half hours. No, not quite. No, not that much. Because I don't think a car holds over about 30 or 48 minutes. Well, it looked to me like you were getting a lot. I was. I was. Uh, yeah. I would, but you don't understand. It's an HD, and to pull it into it's an HD. It takes hours, and then I have to combine it, and then I have to convert it. So what I'll do is the video I shot over there, the short stuff. But what I really want to get up is yeah. that thing when he shows his his multimedia book. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're going to contact Diane Arif Shaw. We all leave. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
LBG German Hall of Fame. What's that? Yeah, I'm with uh, 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 Josh. I know how to promote. Josh is reading a note for you. Oh, oh. Well, we just finished, so we're now free. Um, is there a, a location that would be convenient for you? 88th and 3rd Avenue. Where, uh, what building is that? Okay, you want us to uh, meet you up there? Okay, good. Okay, good. So, okay, well, um, we will uh, come up to 88th and 3rd, and then I'll give you a call when we get there and you can tell us where to go. How's that sound? I want to tell him something about soap. I don't wrap it up. <laughs> okay, we'll talk to you in a few seconds. Okay, bye. 80th and 3rd, but he wants to call us back in a few seconds. He was just lying down, so we might not be convenient for him. And he sounded disappointed, disappointed that I have a date, because you never know. I just met him. I don't know if he's interested, what he's interested in exactly. Um, but we'll take care of that later. Okay, so the Arabs washed every day. Yeah. And when they met the Vikings. Oh, that's part of the, yeah, that's part of the and, religion. And when they met... Do you guys know each other? No, no, no I'm Howard Bloom. Howard Bloom, Melinda Holman. Yeah. Melinda Hyde. Howard is an author and scientist in the Oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah. And when they met the Vikings, yeah. who only washed once a week on Sundays, yeah. right? They were disgusted by them. Who yeah. were these brutes? Right. right. But me, the Vikings were these strong specimens of humanity that wowed everybody when they showed up. Constantinople. So the Pope invited them to be his guard. Right. Right. And, and the Arabs were like, you know, who are these baby beasts? Right. But it's true about what we said about the French, but that's why they invented perfume. Right. Yeah, to mask the lovely right. odors. But in her hair, in Marie Antoinette's hair, I mean, things would move in there and live. Yeah. They had these amazing yes, hair pieces that would just right. go up forever. Right. You know? Because they couldn't wash the hair. Oh, they, they, one of the curious Howard, things. Howard, yeah. Howard was right. They would not wash. Because they would wash. The they were afraid that they would die and catch pneumonia. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and if you read Jane Austen, Austin, the there are characters in Jane Austen who do die from catching basic and and early Americans, well, that's why they wore heels, too. They were early Americans heels felt the same way. So they yeah. were shocked to meet the native Indians yeah. who were so healthy and who washed all the time. Right. right? So the Native Americans had the same kind of thing of yeah. like, were these smelly people. Right. <laughs> Where did they come from? Right. What's wrong with them? Right. Why do you think the French invented perfume? No, I'm just telling you, that's yes. why they invented perfume. Right. So we have that to thank. Right. But you know, it's and true. For... There's not one toilet in the whole of Versailles. Oh. oh, there isn't? Where did they relieve themselves? The men did it in the corner of whatever corner they found. Yeah. Oh, no, you're kidding. And the women did it in whatever. No. Didn't they have those? They have those little things that could slip under their beds. Chamber pots. Oh, chamber, chamber pots. pots. And they had, I'm sure they had a battalion of servants to like. Yeah, they had one over there. If you want to see it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You want to see my your chamber pots? I know what they look like. They look like a big oversized. No, I will show you a modern chamber pot. Ancient toilet. I shall do that. Okay. So what do you do? I'm a producer of Eminem. That's how I know oh. these crazy people. Uh -huh. Frank and Howard. Oh, these people. Yes. <laughs> these wonderful people. Yeah. But um, so you know, I, I do videos. Right. But I'm also interested in why I'm a world traveler. I'm a peace activist. Right. And um, and lately I've been reading uh, Chris Hedges. Yeah. So I can't sleep at night. Or if I sleep because I'm exhausted, yeah. I'll like wake up at 5 in the morning thinking, what, what on earth could we do? No, what can we do? It's like, it's scary. And you know what? I feel, I feel that. I got a drop. Oh. 
Well, the thing is, is that, you know, I'm thinking, for example, this chapter I read last night about Trenton, which right. is a town I actually right. peace walk through, so right. I know a little bit, I have a feel for the community right. and the people there, and the community organizers who've been working as long as I have, except right. I'm a privileged West Village denizen right. that, you know, gets to, you know, go where, home where every night. Where do I live? Yeah, I have a and I wish that, uh, no, uh, we built it right by the Cherry Lane here. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking, I, I'm so sorry that you know, I've been there for a long time. Right. And I've done a lot of traveling, and when I first left, I was going to just bed in my apartment with everything in it. Wow. Is what I had done before. When yeah. I was there. And one of my friends needed a place to live and asked me to if he could sublet my place. Yeah. I said, sure. Uh, it seemed like I wouldn't have to get rid of everything. Right. That I, I wouldn't have to set things up when I came back. Right. Right. So it seemed very convenient, and and that happened the first few well, times. Short, I short, I've always yes. oh, as we speak after they speak. That coffee. happens. What's the that? first few times I left, and then since then I've just sublet. So yeah. I, to finish, I've been there a really long time. It's a four-room railroad apartment. Oh, I know. The I have my Mr. kitchen no, and my stuff sure room enough. are stuffed to the port. You yeah. still taping, John? I'm, just, it's, I'm yeah. beside myself. I don't know what to do. Is that do. all right with you guys? Tapes taping? taping? Forever. Oh, oh my God. Projects what, what, forever. What is this? this is the chamber pot. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, my God. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, oh, where's the pot? <laughs> but where's, where's the pot? The pot? <laughs> it's incomplete. <laughs> there is it no was box. overused. <laughs> Someone broke it running it down the stairs and dumping it. Well, it looks like a bucket could fit under there. That sure, that's sure. That's what it was. How would you take the bucket out each time? Isn't there a probably is only a shallow bucket, I would think. You see, this is yeah. before Mr. Crapper. That's Crapper's. pretty good. <laughs> yes, right. You know Mr. Crapper? Yes, in the, no. to the toilet. Oh, there was a Mr. Crapper? Yes, there was a Mr. Crapper, yes. Last How old is this? Are you serious? <laughs> Just like I got this thing on the street. You know what this d desk is? It's probably some sort of coke cart or something. Uh, well, look um, it's a, a, um, 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 to transport goods? Yeah. One this, of those crates? This is what they, it's called railroad gears. In the, this is days. rare. Very rare. So and what is it? This is where it was a push cart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For fabric. Amazing. Wow, how old is it? Uh, oh, probably about 1870. Wow. Like and you found it on the street? On a Sunday morning, one of the manufacturers threw it over mm -hmm. the corner. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Does it still work? How did you get it up here? That's what I want to know. Did Harold really manage to do that on his own? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 No, but I mean, can you imagine? Uh, listen, are you with no, me? No, no, listen, it's not real. You so just pull it. This is forward. This is, you know, this is railroad stuff. Oh so God, you yes, can so actually pull it yourself? <laughs> One person, you could pull this? But it was made so that it's very curious that you could just sort of Oh! Easily. Wow. Easily move it this away. Oh, wow. How so were like, the fabrics, were they baled or yeah. bundled? Um, no, they this has a whole. They were probably in the bales. Oh, you think so? Bales? Yeah. I think those didn't cost thousands of dollars if you were in an auction house. One of the funniest things I ever did. This is from 1900. Oh! You want to take a crack? How do you know? How do you know the date? You remember back in those days? My grandfather was born in 1900. Oh, really? No, it was curious. I found a similar cart down in Soho in an art gallery, and they had taken all the slats out so you could see all the mechanics underneath. Then they put it with glass, and then they put a wedge of little artisans, little things. What was that price that? No, and then they put another glass over it. So the customers could see the, the, the little things that were for sale. Oh. And I said, oh, that's just about half the size. Wouldn't it be lovely for a, an L-shaped type of hmm. 
and this little snotty little bitch, I don't know where the hell she came from. <laughs> she said, no, that table is not what I say. It is priceless. <laughs> it is priceless or precious? Priceless. She said, priceless. Okay. Whereupon I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so all I have to do is take those slats out. Well, those slats are. Oh, no, the slots are wonderful. And you won't sell us a cracker if we really need the, the potty here, if we really need one? <laughs> so you're you want this over your head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have to take it off. I went to FIT in 82, right. 82 for a year. I took a degree in Texas. Yeah. And 8th Avenue was all Oh, oh I remember. Oh, and it just, it just. I had a class called Import Buying. Right. And our professor, he was a, jill, a brilliant genius. Right. He had us read, you know, Women's Wear Daily all right. the time and keep track of the imports. Right. And they just rose astronomically in that one year I was at FIT. Right. It was, I saw it happening. Well, in 1973, we ran our first balance of payments deficit since World War II. And in 1974, it seemed as if everything was solving itself. Um, we went back to having a surplus, a balance of payments surplus. But then, in 1975, we had another balance of payments deficit. And they've been rising this, this, this country. And those balance of payment deficits, wait, my uh, oh, appointment may be calling me. Araf? No, I have Hi, do, do you figure something out? Nice to meet you. And who is this? When are you I'm an actress and a writer, actually. I write for the Huffington Post and then I also do Huffington Post. Oh, really? And then I also do film and TV. Okay, so it's a, a restaurant. So and what do you write? Yep. I like to write about producers and their films and, and directors and their, okay. their lives. Good. I have uh, done that most of my life. I did. Very much. Sounds no, I did. So it's a Third, and it's an Italian restaurant. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's amazing work. I saw it. Let's have you launch I need the screen is only 6.30. I think it won't be this long, but it's a very long film. West Side of the Street. I'm going to be in the name of the Don't you think. But, you know, I'm sorry. Okay, we'll find it. Okay, we'll find it. We'll catch a cab, and I'll call you when we get there, okay? I recorded it. He recorded it. I can send you a DVD. Okay, terrific. We'll see you in a little bit. That would be fantastic. I'll remember this. It's a uh, eighty eighth between Okay. Can't do it right now. Okay, I understand that. Yeah. A couple days? Yeah. If I send Make sure I've got if I got your mailing address, right. I can mail it to you. Right. And here, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm going really to look at like the pressure on Well, we're going to 88th and 3rd. I may have it before then. Once we're at 88th and 3rd, there's an Italian restaurant. I'm going to give you not only my mail um, address, it must be on I'm going to give you my card and $10 to send it to me. No, $10. Yeah, $10 to send it to me. Express mail. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to send it to you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to send it to you. Send it to me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to send it to you. Send it to me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to send it to you. Send it to me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to send it to you. Send it to me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to send it to you. Send it to me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to send it to you. Send it to me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to send it to you. Send it to me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to send it to you. Send it to me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to send it to you. Send it to me. Yes, yes, yeah, we're going to take a cab. Yeah. It'll, It'll get some sort of weird train mail. It'll do a weird train mail. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, let's do a, a, let's do a cab. <laughs> <laughs> with the, the, I appear on Iranian <laughs> TV and, and Saudi TV. Somehow that makes sense. Did you hear other people talk about speech? No, but I did, have gotten it. Yeah. yeah. You know what he wants? Yeah, we're in Russia. So we're okay, about to meet with a guy who owns four TV stations in Pakistan. Yeah, okay. Oh, so you want to get ready as soon as possible. He would like to find out. And we are so, you, should, you should that. look up Howard's book. How to inspire. Yeah, yeah, Howard Bloom and there are four books. The God books. Problem and many other books. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, the, the books, now, you're, you're traveling all you over the world and you're a peace man. activist. My books have a, a lot of right. geopolitics in them. Um, so they're, they all might be of interest. We could, um, we could do a thing. How, who knows? How do the suggestions get so what do you, what, what, what shows do you produce? So, uh, so uh, what part of the world is vast? Oh, Are you like Iran? The only part, 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 the only part that I don't really speak about because I haven't seen it become a part of a big pattern yet is uh, South America. I knew you were going to say that. It's the only continent I'm going to. Yeah, and, well, Australia. And, you know, I talk about Aztec 
Olmec, Toltec, that kind of stuff. Um, but not its role, not Brazil's role in current affairs, not its role in BRIC. Um, those things haven't become terrible. I mean, Venezuela's... What's so nice is we're so busy now that yeah. maybe we're not interfering so much in those politics so that they're actually involved Well, we don't seem to care own. about those politics anymore. Um, they're just not on our national radar. And, um, and there aren't that many governments that us down there. I mean, Venezuela, I mean, the fact that Venezuela is allied with Iran and is uh, basically, has taken on the anti-Semitic line of Iran. I, look, I'm a Zionist and an atheist and a Jew. And uh, uh, Iran is anti-Semitic? Very. Very. Extraordinarily. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion, do you know what that book is and what its history is? It's the primary uh, anti-Semitic document. Um, in 1905, when the Tsar lost a war with Japan, which he was sure he would absolutely win, and he was going to win it because it was an automatic and it would bring his people together around him, and he lost almost his entire Baltic fleet because the Japanese had caught up with uh, modern technology in only 40 years, from the Bushido blade to uh, warships, steel warships in 40 years. He lost. And how was he going to keep his people together? Uh, he would find a scapegoat. So the Okrana. He invented anti Semitism? No, the anti Semitism was invented in Alexandria, Egypt, in about 200 BC. It's an old, it's a very old cultural mechanism, anti Semitism. It has a pedigree in history, unfortunately. And um, at any rate, the Okrana made up a book called The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. And it was the notes taken when the elders of Zion get together and plot every, um, every economic catastrophe, every war, um, you know, the whole deal. And, and because it was the notes, it was really? Why? Oh, right. That's high praise. Yeah. Yeah. Red Weisberg. Yes, exactly. Oh, right, but at any rate, this is a book that uh, Hitler used extensively, that's been used in the Muslim world now for a long time without hardly any attention to it, and it was turned into a TV series by the Iranians. Yeah. yeah, and it's the book that's used as an excuse. One, uh, one thing you commonly hear in the Islamic world is that Hitler was right, and it's unfortunate that he didn't finish the job. Yeah, my dad was the consul in Libya and in Tunisia. Yes. I can assure you. I never heard that. Well, Muammar Gaddafi uh, said it to a group of, uh, he had an international women's conference in Libya, and he said it. When was this? This was probably 1982 or something like that. What is this he said? Um, this, we talked about this the other day, because yeah. you've had a relationship with Kadhafi. Well, no, that's too strong to say we did a program. Yeah, but you, you know, you, you developed a feeling about what he was like. Well, it was his ideas that yeah. I thought were ahead of his career. Right. But on, when it came to anti-Semitism, I mentioned to you that there was a, an international women's conference, yeah. and he basically said that Hitler had the right idea, and that it's unfortunate he didn't finish the job. I like chapter and verse on that. Well, because I, I, don't, I, don't quite, yeah. I find that very hard to believe. I, I, well, I, I, would, I would like to, you know, rather than you saying it, and I right, respect that. In right. But I know that he was very much, he was strongly anti-Zionist. Oh, yes. Well, but he wasn't at all anti-Semitic. Okay, well, let's put it differently. Um, yeah. no, and can't. also, you can say the same thing about yeah. Ahmadinejad. Oh, He's absolutely. never said, he has never said, I believe, I'd like chapter and verse on there, where he, he says he wants to wipe out Israel. Yes. He's never said that. He, what he has said is it's going to fall from its own corrupt inner workings. It's going to fall of its own weight. He's never said that he wants to do it. Well, I, I believe. To, no. I have to look it up. This, yeah, this I is think a big research process. That's particularly that. Well, he gave right. a good I'm speech at the job. UN this wow. week. Yeah. Well, he, he never said, said he wants to. Well, he's on calling on for a new world order. He, he, I don't. I, I know with Gaddafi because he said it in, yeah. in a number of times when I've seen him right. talk and everything. Right. Yeah, nothing. He likes you. Yeah. He got nothing against you. But what does he think? Zionism. Okay, I'm a, well, I'm a Zionist, so I take this personally. Well, then no. Because I I would prefer not to be exterminated. Um, well, no, but he never that, said. No, how do you define Zionism? He never Zionism. said that. How do you, when you say I'm a Zionist, what exactly does that mean? Yeah. Oh, wait, we're we're supposed to be going. To, well, I guess uh, I'm waiting for. I'm trying to keep track of too many things simultaneously. When I say a Zionist, what does that mean? When I was uh, four or five Birdsong. years old, yeah. it was it was Birdsong. well, it was 1948. Yeah. And um, Buffalo, New York, my hometown, had just built a 
Jewish Center. And all parents were very proud of it, and it had a huge mural over the entrance. So our parents put us all in a car and took us down to see this phenomenal new thing. Sure. And the mural had a message. And the message of the mural was, we will make the deserts bloom. We will take the malarial swamps and we will turn them into farmlands. Then we will show how to do it to our closest relatives on the planet, the Arabs. That was the essence of Zionism as I saw it. All right, you so could say that's the same about the American colonialists who moved across the North American continent and they'll say the same thing. Yeah, but they, that was a, it's, this is a long discussion and, and uh, we don't have well, time for it right now. Well, I'm, I'm yeah, due. No, no, yes, I'm, yeah, listen, I'm glad you can come by. Yeah, but it I'm due working. with him. Well, Mr. Glimsher was great. Oh, he's terrific. He's a gorgeous person. Yes, he's a We amazing. agree on Glimsher. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, we agree, probably, we would I probably agree, agree on most things most in the cosmos. And yeah. the reason that I'm getting together with this guy who owns four Pakistani TV stations yeah. um, is because, and the reason I go on Iranian TV and Saudi mm -hmm. TV. You go on press TV? Uh, Yes. Uh -huh, good. Um, Al Jazeera? Uh, no, I've never done Al Jazeera. They've never invited me. But the reason is because the goal is to be able to live together. Right. That is exactly. the goal. But not on the Palestinian terms. Uh, Jews have a right to a homeland. And the homeland has a history. Yes, and I that know. history goes way back in time. Correct. But Jews don't have a right, or Israel does not have a right, to bulldoze Palestinian homes and Coop them up in a concentration camp. Well, That's madness. Uh, that, and, and have them I, rot in I would agree, camps. I would agree with that, but you, there's a question as to and who's cooping wall, them up in concentration. No, the wall is necessary. You can't come and kill us. I'm sorry. You cannot bring bombs into our public squares you and our restaurants so, and kill us. Do you believe in that wall they do? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. And when I'm debating one on one with um, uh, senior officials from Hamas and Hezbollah, yeah. um, they unfortunately bring out, they make me condense my Zionism. I used to think that the members of Likud, because they were on the right and because I've always been in the middle, yeah. um, were abhorrent. They are. Well, we're what? We're important? Uh, abhorrent. Okay. Abhorrent. abhorrent. I'm sorry. Yeah. But when, um, it's a long story. I was going on TV, I was going on TV up against seven imams. Now for one person, <laughs> Even, even Cassius Clay couldn't manage that. For one, one man to go up against seven imams on national television. You'd have to be like Kill Bill. Yeah, well, so I looked for, I looked for support. I needed somebody to bring people in. I knew they were very well organized and would pack the audience. I needed to have at least a contingent in the audience that would support me, or I would fold on stage. And um, it was the Morton Downey Jr. show. Morton Downey, yeah. yeah. I remember that. And I was very sick at the time, by the way. I told you. That yes, I was in bed for 15 years. Yeah, with, yeah, with and what? for five years, too weak to speak, and I couldn't have another person in the room with me. Good her. God, um, so did, yeah. they ever, did they ever get it's around? It's chronic there? fatigue syndrome. I solved it, but that's a, that's another long story. Yeah. At any rate, Howard, you're an amazing yeah. guy. Thank you. Very no, it's really Howard, true. you've got to get out the door. This guy's yeah, we've got to get out the door. Right? He's but, an old guy. But I, the people from uh, an American branch of Likud were the only people who would support me. The only people who would support me. And then they brought me in as a member of a board of some kind. Yeah. And I disagreed with all this business of Judea and Samaria and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But the fact is, Jews claim a very tiny piece of territory. I know you will disagree with that. No, no, that's true. Um, in, in terms of the world, that's right. Anyway, no next, next, uh, next meeting, let's have Howard be the guy. November. Well, well I, I don't I'm know. up for it because I, I think these are things that deserve serious discussion. Well, we really fell down on the job tonight. We couldn't get, yeah. Howard, we couldn't get the stream going. And then, it's a crazy, yeah, it's has it ever happened, let me ask you, has it ever happened to you, the calling a telephone in the United States of America and you dial the number and you know you've dialed the number right? Right. It is really absolutely right to get the guy who would tell me how to make it work. I dialed the number, I've dialed it 20, uh, 100, 100, 200 times. Dial the shows and the thing, and it doesn't connect me to the number. That That's never happened to me before. Ma Bell uh, used to take better care of us than the current phone system. Maybe so. Because maybe. remember, now we're using these. And believe me, I, I have conversations with very important people who I respect I'm highly, sure and I do, want to yeah. hear every word. Yeah, right. And I can only hear one, every, one word out of three. 
and I have to reconstruct in my mind what the conversation is. Yeah. So we're not served as well as we were in the days of the telephone monopoly. Well, I'll tell you, you served us really. I would suggest one of three words. He did it different than the other day over there. Well, I don't like I don't like monopolies either. Yeah. At all. But I efficiency. Yeah. I mean, I was in London. Doing, doing my work in London for three or four days, I couldn't believe what my colleagues in London were up against because you could only make about one phone call every 40 minutes because you had to go through so much rigmarole to make a phone call. And this was the ninth, late 1970s. Yeah, I had to yeah. Oh my God! I, oh, and when I was in Russia, yeah. the same thing. I envy you being in Russia. Absolutely. Oh, I yes, I was in Russia. I forgot. Okay, but still, you probably oh, spoke with Italian. Oh, we not make a phone call. In yeah. China, you could not make a phone call. Amazing. So it's efficiency that I admire, not monopoly. But that's the subject for another time. Mara and I better head out to our meeting because this guy from Pakistan is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Do it. Because I've been trying to, to give a voice to liberal, moderate, pluralist Muslims. And that has been very hard. And he has the channel to do it. And he's already done it to an extent that he doesn't realize. So. Well, I hope he has a good bodyguard. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yep. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Yes, it was. We'll continue the because look, we're all on the side of doing the best we possibly can for as many humans on the planet as possible. Absolutely. What's that? Okay. It's so good to see you. Again. I saw you on major TV. Oh, you did? And you were saying you were saying on TV what you said tonight. Yeah. yeah. So and Al, <laughs> nice to meet you. Did you finish your sketches? No. no. Oh well, we're yeah we're heading up to meet with this person that uh, yeah. he's. He's done remarkable things. I'm just amazed at what he's done. What's that? No, no, I'm not on. This is just to meet him. He owns the stations. He's building. So he's done a remarkable thing. Because they are modernists. You know? And, and Pakistan is always on the brain of modernism and uh, extremism. And extremism tends to win over and over again. So this is the guy who's the hope for Pakistan. For a while. But we'll get into that if, we, if, if Harold is. has your phone. Well, <laughs> yes, but look, it's history, it's and occasionally <laughs> people actually do change history for anyway, the better. And since this is our turn, it's, 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 it's our job. Yeah. Okay, well, have a good night. You're oh, around it, Melinda. The work is oh, so 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 yeah. 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 um, yeah. I'm Harry Well, I know he does the almost for Harry. Nice to meet you. I think I watched that program that he Where did. Where's the event? That pro is there to the left. Right? So, no, here, here, Howard. Howard here, up the stairs left. and okay, to your left. He taped the program with Alan Steinfeld the other night. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. Uh, What's this now? Howard Bloom. Yeah. Oh, He's a major intellectual. Major intellectual. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, they're very famous. Oh, oh, oh. They're, they are it's famous. famous. Like you're talking to James Joyce or something. Yeah. Yeah. Warren yeah. and Paris. Yeah. He's really, he's really right there. He's in, and with physics and with um, information technology and that kind of thing. And um, no, he's a, he's, a, he's a major guy. And that program was just inspirational. And Al, I was so proud of Alan. He was able to keep up with him. Alan Arons. R. Alan Steinfeld. Okay. Yeah, it was a really good program. I don't know if you got a copy of that. I'm going to ask. Do you know if you got a copy of that? Or not? I don't. I don't know. He seems to like the humongous thing he's doing, right? Or he well, really ran. It, it's, it's sort of one of the avenues that gives him expression for his ideas. You know what I mean? There's yeah. there's there's books, there's the radio shows, yeah. there's that series. Right. But then, you know, it's always other, other venues, ways that he can be communicating. You know, his, his philosophies, you know, his ideas. Right. Well, I, should, I, I asked him not to overlook uh, public access. I think it's got a tremendous future. Yeah. It's linked at body and, or at the hip with the uh, by and large. There's so much exception. The by and large with the Occupy movement, which is just trying to be stamped out by the system. 
that, I mean, that occupy where something is needed. Being. So that's a that's a context that could be favorably inclined towards what's called systems thinking, yeah. comprehensive thinking. Yeah. He's done a lot of really good systems thinking, major intellectual. Yeah. And I was so proud of Alan. He was right with him, and it was click, 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 and it was back and forth really good. I don't know if he got a DVD that he did that of that is not, but I, I don't know if his it, as he says he needs a new interlocutor or something like that or something. He has somebody that's on the humongous thing. Um, he has a few different people that I think work on that project. He's like he's out of touch with project. one that he started upset with that he's out of touch with for a few months now. Yeah. Yeah. Is what he told me on the telephone. Okay. Well, there's a few different. What is people. the humongous thing? No, that's the YouTube. It's a YouTube series. It's oh, okay. a YouTube series where he rants. Or is that a good or you can really kick out the jam. Uh, 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 where are you from originally? Um, originally I was born on the East Coast and then I was raised when I was young in the Midwest and then I came back to New York and I lived in Europe for a long time and I was touring teaching um, in Europe and then I came back to New York. Mm -hmm. Well, New York is the better for it. <laughs> <laughs> so you primarily so you, Hey, uh, Howard, yeah. did you get a DVD of that program and take her to Alan the other night? No. What I'm you guys were cooking, man. Did you feel <laughs> you that? You were so good to me. It was amazing. You no, can't no, believe. That was really good, and I'm yeah. so proud of Alan. Yeah. Because he really was, you know, you were back in the back. Oh, he forth. had, he understood. He, he did. Yes. He, he really did. He did. He, I told you. He I was very in, proud of him. Well, he walked into a party yeah. two weeks ago. I don't. I never go to parties, but no. this is a party for a friend who I, he and I helped establish Amnesty International in North America. God bless you. So, um, so when he had a 60th birthday party, I was going to go. Yeah. And um, we met uh, uh, Albert Moisel, so I'm meeting with next week, and yeah. a bunch of people like that. Yeah. But um, what was they talking about? We were talking about Alan Seinfeld. Yeah. And but and Alan walked up party. to me yeah, at the party, at the party yeah. and started yeah. reciting yeah. concepts from my book, and started yeah. filling in the yeah. things that are extensions of the concepts that are not. Find somebody who knew what the hell you were talking the about. The only time that had yeah. happened to me, I was taken to a space event, which yeah. I went to against my will. I yeah. usually like to be working at my computer all the time. And um, and I was walked over to meet Barbara Wait, Marks yeah. Barbara Marks Hubbard. I know Barbara Marks Hubbard. Okay, well, Barbara yeah. Marks Hubbard was standing in the middle of a circle of acolytes, like mm -hmm. Jesus standing among yeah. his, his disciples. And she, what's that? <laughs> his disciples. Go ahead. Yeah, and she stepped out of that circle yeah. and came over to me with her hands out like this, reciting concepts mm -hmm. from one of my books. Isn't that great? And then she pulled me into the circle yeah. so the two of us were standing. She's got to be getting on now. Yeah, well, she, you'll fall in love with her yeah. the minute you meet her. It well, doesn't matter that she's... She's living in Connecticut, Connecticut Avenue in Washington. Really? Yeah. Well, she, well she's just wonderful. Yes, but, I agree with But you. she stood there and she yeah. would come up with a, uh, a topic sentence mm -hmm. for a paragraph yeah. and she would throw it at me. Right. And then I would finish the paragraph. And then she'd come up with another topic. Right, right, right. It was amazing. I've never been through anything like it. And the only thing that was ever like it was Alan walking up to me spouting. Alan Ginsberg? No, no, no. Alan oh, Steinfeld. Oh, I'm sorry. When Alan, yeah. right, Alan, people say Alan. No, no. Alan, Alan Steinfeld. Yeah, um, yeah. So it was, it was an amazing experience. And that's he, what got you to m and Yeah. I mean, he had a, a very sound grasp of yeah, he's brilliant. And he incorporated it into his own I think, it, I think um, going to that public access realm is a good realm. And I'm yeah. anxious to get to your humongous. Yeah, oh, I want to see what you think of that. I do. I will, because I my, mean, my, we went my, in court. We had to go in court. It's such a Oh, how did you make out? Well, uh, we don't know. We're going to see what happens. There's not going to be a decision uh, until November 26th. That's the way court but always goes. I know. It's a good great American justice I hate system. it. Because yeah. I like, I get along with everybody. And yeah. like, I like everybody. I just wish them well. When you go to court, it's all fight. Yes, exactly. I don't know what that is. We'll that discuss money? that sometime. No, it's the fact that our our system, Laura Nader, Ralph Nader's sister, yeah. um, did a study of justice systems in the hills of Mexico and the, where the, the old cultures, the indigenous cultures, still right. reign. Right. And if there's a divorce going on yeah. or if there's a fight, Two people come before the judge, and the judge listens to both stories, and it's the judge's job to find the overlap. 
to find the common Isn't elements. Hasn't that been the mark of the justices through time that are just? Yes, yeah. and our system is based on put two people in a room and get them to fight it's each adversarial. other. It's That's exactly yeah. it. And yeah. it's also based on enriching lawyers. And, and guess who happens to be in the Senate and the Congress? That we, lawyers. That, yes, lawyers. lawyers, exactly. Be so, careful, my daddy was a lawyer. Well, but we have a system. But that, he died when I was only 13, so he didn't have that big yeah. impact. It's unfair to call the system probably, corrupt, yeah. but it is certainly unjust. Cruel and vicious. Well, I, uh, 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 James Joyce had that to say, history is a nightmare from which I'm attempting to yes, awaken. Yes, right. I think we're down to where we're coming into a homo relationship in the cosmos. Well, that I could think be. That, I think we're coming into where of all the Havilah gone. But, but still, when somebody like, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Frank? Frank. Yeah, when somebody like Frank has an impassioned oration mm -hmm. about how the world should be and what ails, what cure, okay. what should be cured, what ailment should be cured, yeah. and he has no ability to turn that into a reality, then you, it makes you realize how difficult it is to make history. Yes, it's our obligation to make Well, one it. thing is to make history, but another thing is it, it, it's, it's a, almost an evolutionary event. Right. I mean, things are going friggin' exponential. Right. Exponential. Well, next time we'll talk about We're saving coming. the world, and well, next time we'll talk about um, the situation in the Middle East, which I really avoided talking about for a long, long, long time, because it's just too It is central to our world and what's going it's on. It's not really as central as we think. The, the competition with China is far more central to our world. Um, it's, it's a distraction. You know, a magician will take a handkerchief and wave it over here so that he can distract you from what he's doing That's in his true. back pocket. And most of what's going on right now in the tug of war between, between civilizations that will ultimately determine whether you have the right to have this conversation 100 years from now or 50 years from now. Um, that big picture thing, we're distracted from it by this thing in, in the Middle East. I mean, we could just as easily be upset about Kashmir, mm -hmm. which is another territory where people, Kashmir, yeah, you know, a greater number of people have absolutely, killed. It's yeah. another territorial dispute of this kind. Um, Imper look, imperialism, you're going to run into everywhere. The, the greatest imperialist project in the history of the world has been the Empire of Islam, which is the only empire that ever spanned 13,500 13, miles. It was five times the size of the Roman Empire. Um, it was 11 times the size of the conquests of Alexander the Great, and um, five times the size of the United States. So no matter where you look, there's going to be an imperialism. Even the Native Americans got here through a process of migration, and they killed off a great many amazing species uh, when they arrived here. So we are all guilty of seizing land that was originally not ours. You're right, it's written in. Um, it? it is. So, but the big question is how to live with each other at this point. Yeah. And, um, and that's what you're addressing. Trying. That's Trying. what. That's what. This, got a lot to do with the economics. Well, if, if, if we don't change this system, if I had another lifetime, I'd yeah. crusade about the injustice system. But unfortunately, I've only got one lifetime. And you had an idea of what's needed in order for it. Like you could say, we're going. We, the, I, I believe the weapons are as they have been since about yeah. 1970. The species right. lethal. Right. The capable, extended consciousness ability to have an effect on the environment is now to where it can eliminate our species. Do you think right. That's true? Well, uh, it might be. Because if you look at the what's happened with the territory around Chernobyl, the plants have come back vigorously, the animals have come back vigorously. Um, no, I think. But I'm, I'm talking about an all out unleashing of the weapons of destruction. Well, then what would happen is the leading edge of scientific research. There are basically, research. there are roughly five to seven cities that keep culture going in the world. They're the, they're the cooking pots of civilization, they're where the new ideas come from. Yeah. And if you if you took those out, if you just eliminate that, we can end civilization. I'm talking about. Are we at a point of existential new reality in universe by this incredible ability to extend our consciousness, make the world different than in Eden-like sense has been the lot of most of the creatures in the evolutionary process? Are we at a point of punctuated equilibrium? Are we at a point yeah. where we were, we have our Homo habilis, right? Right. Okay, and we get wherever all the habilis go. The homo sapiens species is coming to the end where, because on the other side, on the positive right. side, we've also, this is the uh, thing you boil it down to, right. we have, with the ability to do with good design, right. and with uh, elegance of design and ephemeralization, we have, it gets there down to, transcended material scarcity and ontological yes, reality. Exactly. 
about 1974 right. is when we crossed that line. Right. History is a nightmare. Yeah. So we have to get some sort of systems thing. We need an operating manual for spaceship Earth that's realistically based on the overall capability. And the educational system is divided and conquered the intellectual community right. through specialization. Well, it's this kind of thing. It's this kind of big picture thinking that really counts. Uh, as opposed to yeah, focusing there's, there's on no one type of conflict. There's no place for it in the, in, in the thing. Everybody is not, everything is well, specialized. I try to fix that. I right. know that's why I love the writing. <laughs> okay, okay, we better get going. Listen, Howard, let's be in touch. Okay, terrific. I've been all bollocks up with all this bullshit. Right. And this legal stuff and everything. I still am for a while. But let's try to get a date together where we can do a conversation. Okay, okay good. Please. A Monday or a Tuesday night. Yeah, you just said Monday or Tuesday. Pick a couple. Pick a couple of them. I have, I, have get, the I have to get some things done. Okay. And then when I got some of those dates that would work with Monday, you had another day. Monday, Monday Tuesdays, and, Friday, and Saturdays. Okay, one of those days yeah. in the evening. In the evening. Let right. me try and get a time when I can do it. This is my guy who does the uh, the directing yeah. for me. And everything. Right. We get one, let's get one. I'll get it to you. We'll try to set up a time. I, I'll look forward to it. It might take it. a little while. Yeah. Are you serious you might want to address this in your group with a lot more people? Yes, absolutely. Is there any chance because you might want to do that for the month of, um, what month are we in? November? Yeah, we just came into October. Yeah. Might you want to do yes, that? Yes, absolutely. What we usually do it is the last Monday of the month. Right. Do you have a clock or do you have a memory? What's the last day of a... Uh, okay. That's no. around Thanksgiving. But wait a minute, this is the first Monday of this month. It is because uh, he couldn't. Yeah, you don't want to run into Thanksgiving. No, he couldn't. Well, let's think about it. Okay. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is the week he before. Used, he was going to do it, but he had already something right. committed. So I said, well, let's do it the following. And we right. did it for sure. Right. Right. So well, that's probably what people Pick a date that won't run into Thanksgiving. Well, well, I, can't, see my family. I can't. I don't have the calendar. Uh, me neither. What, what we should do? What is November looking like? Uh, we should do it now. November, I have some. Wait, did you have a little calendar or something to see how would it work? Well, let me get out the computer. That's, that's what I'm afraid of leaving uh, um, RF. Our, our well, yeah, don't you, think you, that's you, terrible. You, you've been here, you've extended your departure now. I better call him. Oh. You, you had an appointment with somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're rushing oh, uptown. Um, are you okay? Uh, no, we should go because uh, because we're late. Why don't yeah. you go? Why don't you go and call him from the cow? Well, okay. Call him, go and call him from the cow. Well, I'll just put, at because some point we'll call Because if you call and say you haven't left yet, then that's an easy way to The number I would call, up? if you call and say you haven't left yet, yeah. that's an easy way for them to say, okay, let's forget it. Yes, exactly. If you're on, in the cab on your way. Yes, exactly. Is it you are your way when I call? Good thinking. You would think better than I do. Um, is it you or is it she or who do I No, no, no. You have to. Uh, Somebody who takes your schedule. I do. I kind of. Oh, it's a woman. No, I, Dina Christie Hayes. That's my assistant. Oh, but, I, but I have the schedule. Oh, that's it. So I can yeah. call you. Right. We'll say we have a thing about a calendar, and maybe we'll look for a date. Exactly. And, uh, Thanksgiving comes at the end of the week, so maybe the week before that, the Monday before that, yeah. or something. You could be come talk to get more people in. That would be terrific. Is that something that might appeal yeah. to you? Yeah, absolutely. Even if we don't get a program, and we do a program before or after that. Right. Something. Oh, well, we've got to get together. Right. Absolutely. Just give me a chance yeah. to read your and book I'm, first. And I'm really looking forward. <laughs> I'm really